I'm not your average mommy. I've got big dons in my lobby, and I do this not for money. It's a hobby, and I love it. Yes, it's a brand here. It's a woman who's a guy who's a cool or one love. I was only an idea with the money for a car fryer, but I made your love. Fake friends for the F off. Slave queens know they like job, but they won't chop. Shout out to all the entrepreneurs. I like the way your work is set up. I'm Big Ivy. Mama Dollars Forest Bureau. You are go by the name CJ Big Amaneke Obolewake, son of Big Ivy. Keep watching Expressive on GH1 television. Big Ivy on the advice. Take it, Olivia. I drop. <laughs> Well, Big Ivy dropped her mic. I had to pick that mic to come back. You're welcome back. This is Expressive. We are live on GH1 TV. And my guest has really hyped me up. I don't know how he did it. He didn't even have to do much. Like, that's just his job, and he knows exactly what to do and what to say at the right time. But you know what? They say increasing audiences' excitement by calling and chanting and getting the response from them is a whole lot. And it actually excites them. It puts them in the mood. A lot of people have argued that hype men, proper MCs, are the life of parties. You may disagree, but yes, I have one here. And he'll tell us what his job description entails. Because a lot of people get it confused. And, you know, sometimes they're like, what is really happening? So he's called Nyantechi, Emmanuel. <laughs> wow, that's how you started. Yes. <laughs> Nyantechi Kusi Emmanuel, that's his name, aka Kojo Manuel. Let me tell you, he's the dopest MC. Well, I'm hyping the hype man right here on the show. Welcome. Thank you so much. <laughs> and, that, that was oh, a nice one. Let me also say, he doubles yeah. as a radio show host as well. Welcome. Yeah. It's good to have you here. It's great to be here. Uh, it's great to I be here. I love your fit. You look good. I try. I try. I try. <laughs> you're, like, you're, you're looking great yourself. I'm so, learning. Yeah. Today I'm mourning. I'm not in yeah, I heard a about very that. hyper mood. I would have just took to do your introduction for you, Sheesh. just because you're a hype man. <laughs> <laughs> but before I get to know you a little bit more, mm. what does your job description entail if somebody describes you as Kojo Manuel, the hype man? And by the way, it's congratulations. You just won an award as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. We'll talk about the award. Yeah. But yeah. Okay, so um, for me, I started more as an MC. I'm right. still an MC, mm. also a hype man. The problem is people don't know the difference. Mm. You, you can be both because it's quite similar. It's, mm. it's more like being a presenter and an MC. Mm. Um, you can present because it has to do with communication and mm. you can MC as well because you're moderating. Mm. So master of ceremonies as an MC, you are running the people through the stages of the events, right. what comes up, what's coming next, any uh, announcements, sponsors, whatever is going on, you do that. Mm. Hype Man is purely performance. Mm. Yours is purely performance. So um, I, I wouldn't mention the event, but there was a time where um, I had an event where they were like, I told them that, oh, for, for the kind of conversation we're having, you're going to get a hype man and not an MC. Mm. And they didn't understand it to the event because then I would not want to come and be like, oh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to mm. this and that. That's not the job That's of a hype so man. Raw. Hype man <laughs> works with the DJ mm. most of the time. Because it's very difficult to do it on your own. So, right. man, your best friend is the DJ. Right. You communicate with the DJ and make sure that the people are excited, they're in the mood, and it can happen anywhere. So, MC, you moderate the event. Hype man, purely performance-based. You are there to jam the crowd, make them feel a little excited than they normally would be. Yeah. So, you mentioned that. We'll come back to in details of what you do, but I just want to get to know. You mentioned that you started with being an MC before yeah. the hyping came yeah. into at what point, at what stage in your life did you realize that uh, I can actually hype people yeah. and hype events? <laughs> no, naturally, mm. I'm, I'm not the loudest person. Really? Yeah, I'm not. That's weird. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> so I started off wanting to get into media, mm. radio, TV, stuff like that. So I started emceeing back in the uh, University of Ghana, um, G. Nelson Akaho. You know, um, it was like a Levi's dinner. Mm -hmm. That was actually my first ever event where I was thrown into, you know, doing it. And then after a while, you realize that campus events are a lot more concert party yeah. based. And I joined Echo House ah. at, a, at a time. So then I realized that I wasn't, and nobody knew I could do that. So like you're always more open to, or like you're exposed to parties and concerts. Right. And then when you come on stage and you're doing, ladies and gentlemen, you're welcome to, 
Everybody's looking at you like, ah, this What's guy. What's happening? You understand? So I realized that the hype was a very important part of those kind of events. Mm. So I still do the emceeing, MC. but um, people know me more as a hype man. So that's How why it looks How long have you been way. doing um, the hype man first and then the MC? MC, I would say I started my first, I, I, wouldn't, I didn't even want to, I don't know how to put this the right way. Because there was a point where I didn't take it that serious. So major paid gig. <laughs> yes. <laughs> From the point where I started taking it serious, mm. I would say um, MCing six years. Six years. Yes. Uh, hype man five. Five. Yeah. Okay, so it's like just a year. Yeah, sort of. but be because when I started, I, I have that difference because when I started, there's a point where you don't, me myself don't understand the difference is what I'm explaining right now. So I was like an MC, you know, doing the dinner, doing the mm -hmm. or launch Wedding, of this event, of that. weddings and stuff. And then you get to that point where, oh, I've been thrown into events where I didn't deliver because I didn't understand the difference Absolutely. between an MC and a hype Absolutely. man. So now I'm going to put an effort in being a hype man. And I did that. So th that's why I so put that like a year in between. Would you that. say your inability to deliver is what pushed you to be a better version of yourself? Yeah. I, 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 it's funny for me when people are so scared to fail. Because mm. if you don't fail, then you don't learn from it. So I find myself in a situation where you're on stage and people are ready to be hyped up. And I'm there showing them that I can speak English. And everybody's That's okay. not what we want. This is not be why we come here. <laughs> we came here to jam. You understand? So you, okay. you find a way. Like, what's the best way? Because this is what I have now. This is what I'm exposed to. This might be my way in. So you learn how to do it. So naturally, if I'm, I don't have the microphone and I'm sitting there, people look at me like, are you sure you're the same person? Because mm, Very calm, cool, yeah, and collected. You're not, yeah, so. Yeah. I see. So you went to Legon. Before yeah. Legon? Uh, Opokwari. Opokwari. What did yeah. you study in Opokwari? Uh, general arts. General arts. Yeah. Legon? Uh, Legon, I did information studies. I majored in information studies. Okay. Yeah. Are you using anything you learnt in school now? Um, be honest and frank with us. I'll, I'll be very honest with you. <laughs> um, a, a very key component of information studies, aside the fact that it's about records management, mm -hmm. is there's a bit of communication PR in there. So I would definitely say that I'm using that aspect of it. But when mm -hmm. it comes to archives administration and records mm -hmm. management and database analysis, mm -hmm. please. <laughs> nah. You are no. not. No, no. Okay. At the moment, no. How did yeah. your parents take it? You mentioned your dad earlier. How yeah. did he take it when <laughs> you decided to get into this full time? I mean, emceeing, hype man. The, the, let, me, let me give you, let me give you like a very quick story of yes, why. So after school, after mm -hmm. investor of Ghana, I actually I, I'm from Kumasi. Okay. So I didn't go back. Sometimes I would stay during the vacation. But so you grew school, up in Kumasi? I grew up in Kumasi. And then you came I came to Accra to when I got in Accra. Yeah, when I got admission Legon. to University right. of Ghana. So um, sometimes over the vacation, I would stay on campus, uh, especially when I joined the co-house to help with one or two things, somewhere in my final year. So after final year, I just stayed on campus. I was like, oh, when will you come home? And I was like, oh, I'm doing one or two things. Then I got employment <laughs> as a... Um, what I would call a community manager, that's like social media mm -hmm, manager mm -hmm. at Echo House. But okay. I was doing, I was involved with the event side when, when it comes to, you know, emceeing. So I was there and then they called me about two months. I was like, ah, on Buffy. Like, I was like, oh, no, nah, I'm doing one or two things, but send me money, let me rent. They were like, no, <laughs> we won't let you do it. Uh -huh. So I had to like hustle my way through. Mm -hmm. And then eventually it's like, what are you doing there? Someone even wants to employ you. There's like uh, opportunities for sure. you to work in, yeah. in these big companies that are all in Kumasi. And I was like, no. Um, the reason I didn't go back was I realized I had a vibrant, the entertainment and the event space was way more vibrant here than it was in Kumasi. That's my opinion. Because that's where you wanted to yeah. get into anyway. At that point, I'd already made up my mind. Right. Finally, I made up my mind. This is what I'm going to do. Mm. So after school, it wasn't a conversation, but they started to panic mm. because you don't get the success from the beginning. Yeah. You don't get the money. I think the only time they stopped talking went was two things. I stopped asking for money, and then they saw me on TV. Those are the two points where my what parents... What were you doing on TV when they saw I, I think I was hosting an event, and it was covered. Right. I think it was GH1. Right. And then it was, and they saw me on TV, and then everybody was like, ah, we saw, we saw Kojo yeah. on TV. And then I was like, okay. And then it's been months, and I hadn't asked for money. It's like, oh, so you're okay. You're so not you hungry. And you're on TV. 
Okay. So there, was no official, <laughs> there was no official conversation. Those, Daddy, those... this is what I want to do. I need your support. Nothing of the sort. So. No, there was, there was not in that sense. I, was just, I just told them, oh, I'm, I'm doing something. It's like, oh, there's an offer. It's like, no, I'm, I'm doing this. This is what I want, want to, do. to do. And it's like, okay, if it doesn't work out, you have to come on. It's like, yeah, if it doesn't. But there was no time stamp like for a lot of people like you have a year, a year to, to do yeah, this it wasn't like that and has it worked out i think i think it, it should have, it could have worked out earlier but <laughs> it has eventually okay. it's, it's i'm okay now okay I, yes, I don't panic anymore. You don't panic. Oh, why do you panic? No, sometimes? but in life, you, you go to Pokwari school, you go to the University of Ghana. That's Everybody expects you, you to, yeah, yeah, yeah. to make it in life. So if, <laughs> if, if you're not getting the money you want or the kind of success you want, there's a part of you that makes you feel like you should be doing more. Mm. But now, I guess it's paying off. It's paying off. Yeah. Yesterday, I had a conversation with Big Ivy. Right, yeah. And she was talking about how she got into this whole rap. rap that yeah. she's now a sensation yeah so she was like she was having a conversation with cj bigger man telling mm. him that the rap is not paying off you know what mm. you need to get some you've been to school get your masters get a job do right. something so that eventually when you're old mm. you can fall back on it yeah and so i'm come to ask you something from that from that point okay. yes you are now a hype man an mc what happens to you when you're growing as well I, do you have something that you would fall back on? Do you think that this can be a sustainable occupation, career for you, for your lifetime? I'm going to start by saying that I'm somebody, I, I, I find that I think differently from a lot of people. Mm. Um, from the earliest points, I think one of the reasons why my sister and my parents were, were a bit like... Um, Believing, like they believed me in a sense, was that when I told them I don't want to have one job, I never wanted to have like a job and be like, oh, I'm a presenter and that's mm, all I do. Mm, mm. So even at the time when I started, I was still a community manager. I was still a social media manager, working with Echo House, working with some of the biggest brands, uh, some of them from Guinness, Ghana, to Vodafone, a lot of, even ECG. Mm. But like you're more in the shadows. Mm -hmm. And these are, these, let me say, let me be very honest, these are two jobs that you would say you have to go through a lot of years before you can build your rep yeah. and your reputation and make money. So it, there was always that balance of I'm doing this, I'm doing that. There was a point where I realized that I, I needed to dedicate my life to what I really wanted to mm -hmm. do, and that's when I switched to radio. So it has never been a thing of me just being an MC and hype man. No, it has never been that. I, I always have two or three things that I'm doing at the, at, at the time. Yeah. So you don't have any pressure from friends, peers? I know your school. People went to your school are not easy. I mean, <laughs> does that come? I mean, do you sometimes think that, let me get into some banking or do something else? So, so the, the thing that makes me the way I am is, mm -hmm. the, when I spoke about pressure mm -hmm. and the panicking and all that, it's me against me. It's me thinking that... You want to get better. I want to get better. I wish that I had this number of cars, this number of properties. That's me pressure. If you think that I'm looking at Somebody. my mates... No, no, That's no. That's not no. it. Never. Because I think I'm too different from other people mm. to care that much. Mm. No, I don't. <laughs> I, don't I don't even care about my competitors enough. I Why? don't. No, because... There's healthy competition. There is. Sometimes people make you feel like... So, so it takes a lot for somebody to make me panic. You know, like to make me feel like, oh, this person is coming for you. No, because I feel, I feel the way I am, I'm meant to be here. So but is there competition in your space? Obviously. In, in the hype man MC space? Obviously, there's, there's competition. I'm also a realist. I, I can't be there and feel like, oh, I'm the greatest of all time mm. and there's nobody. No, mm. of course. I even believe that it's, it's, a, it's a time frame. Everything that has to do with entertainment showbiz, being in the alarm light. You can't be there forever. Right. There are, there are exceptions. People like Sarko and stuff been around 10 years plus, but that's like grace. Mm -hmm. You understand? So I know that there will be a time where we'll move on. But for me, I need to keep going at a pace where I know that even if I'm no more the hottest hype man or MC, I'm something else. And I'm the hottest in something else. Have you, are you preparing for that? Or have you started preparing for that? So that's why there was a... There was the evolution from MC to hype man to radio host, hosting a drive on YFM. And I just started a YouTube show. Mm. 
mm. um, called a mad culture, where I, my first episode was with Chance the Rapper and Vic Mensa. Okay. So, so there, I'm the newest kid on the block. Indeed. Yes. So you can't stay in at one place. In some few years. Yeah. In some, in some few years, they'll be saying, oh, YouTubers, yeah. Kojo Manuel. And yeah. then after that, mm. it'll be like, oh, we are tired of him on YouTube, blah, blah, blah. By that point, I'd moved on to something else. Right. But it will still very likely be in the same space. Mm. And I'll probably never stop being an MC. Mm. Yeah. Was YFM your very first radio um, station you worked with? Yeah, as a host, yes, 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 yes YFM. Okay. Right, YFM. Um, I used to actually be one of the reps, you know, campus reps mm. on shows and stuff. But I never really committed to any radio station apart from YFM. I've done internships with different stations. So. Yeah, the host of the drive time. Yeah. That's huge. I hope you know that. Oh, I know. I know. It was a dream. <laughs> it was a plan getting into radio that this is what I want to do. Right. I want to be a host of the drive on YFM. And it came way quicker than I thought. How did it come? Us very um, brief. Very brief. Um, <laughs> so the I actually applied when I when I quit my job as um, a digital marketer. Mm. I quit my job. I applied. It wasn't time for them to accept people. Uh, luckily, there was a deal with uh, Origin where I had to do a thirty minute show on radio. Ah. So that sort of gave me the in. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to do a thirty minute show Friday night, Saturday night, and then on, on YFM. And then um, Eddie Blade realized that oh. Like, I know you're good out there. I didn't know you, were, you could do this. And then after that ended, I got a midnight show, 12 to, 12 to 2 a.m. Eddie Blake said that. Yeah. So he gave me that show. So we got into YFM, 12 to 2 a.m., did that for a while. Uh, Killer Fingers was a host of Party Pressure. Mm. He was leaving the show, and then he handed over the show to me Saturday night, which was clashing with my gigs. I lost money. But still, <laughs> when, you, when you want to do something, you make it yeah. happen. And then eventually, um, I think um, around COVID, um, around when COVID hit, uh, there was a quick switch, um, what we call Why Refresh, mm -hmm. where a couple of the presenters were switched around and yeah. some moved, yeah. and that's when I was off it. I, I was given the show. <coughs> and that was like in a span of like two years. Was it challenging taking up that role? Definitely challenging. It's, mm. This is primetime radio. Yeah. You, and, and I wasn't, I, I didn't think I was that ready, ready, ready. Mm. But then the thing is, when you realize that people believe in you, and they have so much expectation of you, you have to step up. So then I, that's exactly what I had to do. What's your style on radio like? Um, YFM is urban, yeah. so we are very free with uh, the language, the speaking, mm. that's all that. I like to be free. I like to make it sound like a conversation. I don't, I, I don't, I realize young people, we don't like Stiff. book long. We don't, we don't like, like book like long. Things. So basically how I'm talking right now, maybe my tone would just be a little higher in terms of, radio mm. but the way i talk very similar to how i am on radio i see I, I i can be funny sometimes but i don't think i'm the funniest person <laughs> so i don't try to be <laughs> so you're on radio this afternoon yeah three to seven time. three to seven yeah we'll definitely listen to you yeah you have to <laughs> you have to and text i, I will text him <laughs> fun fact eddie blade put me on tv too oh yeah big shout out to eddie yeah. blade yeah yeah <laughs> He's one of my favorite people. I yeah. love him too, bits. Yeah. I'm not even capping. Eddie, special good morning to you. <laughs> you are an amazing man. That's yeah. all I can say. I told you, he's done a lot when it comes to hyping events. He hyped the just ended Wilderland uh, that happened in December. I wasn't there, but my team were there and they didn't stop talking about him. Everybody was just talking about him. I'm like, really? Okay. So let's take a look. <laughs> Uh, his oh, you have footage? performance okay. from Wilder. I don't think I've seen it, but oh, you yeah. have <laughs> I have all the footage from Wilder. Okay, okay. <laughs> let's go. One, two, three, wait, wait, wait. Right now, let's go. I saw by my first car. So, I'll buy another one. No, you rush. If you got it, you the dude. What's your life? What a voice. What a mind. One, two, hey, three, hey. hey. Let's go. I like the way you're feeling. I know what people do the way for the Miss Austin, right now. Let's go. What's up, everybody now? This way. My nigga, pass me that. Hey, hey, give me what? Yeah. Say no more. No more. I love us. I want to wear these. Let's go. 
You're still watching the expressive. I'm still here with Kojo Manuel, the hype man, the MC, the radio chill host. Yes, please. Uh, we just saw you in action. Yeah. Let's talk about <laughs> the connection between yeah. the hype man and the DJ. Right. I mean, how important is that? Because I realized in the footage that you kept going back and yeah. at some point, tell him what's up. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, so um, I was saying earlier that as a hype man, your best friend is the DJ. Yes. So um, when there are technical difficulties, you need to be sure of what's going. You can't leave it up to chance, mm. as in, oh, I'm up there. Sometimes there's a song that's playing, and you have to tell the DJ, bring it down, let them sing. We want to. This, this is the whole illusion of people hearing mm -hmm. other people sing. Mm -hmm. It's like you pull it down, and then you realize that, hey, so I'm not the only one that's singing. Everybody. That gets you hyped. Mm. So sometimes you have to coordinate. You need to know what kind of song to mm. drop. Mm. That will get the reaction. So I think, um, I don't recall exactly what the problem was at this particular show, but I think it was either a technical difficulty or something with the sound. Mm -hmm. And um, I was just trying to find out what it was. And I was even able to do that because I wasn't the only one on stage. Yeah. If I was, then it would just be like you hosting a TV show where there's a problem and then you communicate with your technical people mm -hmm. without letting people know there's something going on. And you'd be like, Charlie. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's literally because you're in front of people and you can't just... What can but yeah, communication is very key. This particular event yeah. started late. Mm -hmm. It had I mean people had been there for so many hours. Yeah. I'm sure people were tired and all of it. How did you manage to get the crowd this way, at least? At least. Um so first off, shouts to the DJs. I think uh, DJ loved um DJ Varoski. Uh, the other DJs. Ooh, I don't know why I started mentioning DJs when I can't remember all of them. <laughs> but um the whole thing is 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 believing and and learning the thing. It's mm. you, you need to understand that people just like um, in life, everything builds up. Mm -hmm. So you can't attack people with energy. That's that's the mistake a lot of hype men do. Like mm -hmm. you attack people with energy and sometimes when the people are not ready, it seems like actually you didn't make noise. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you need to, you, you need to like sim through the thing. You need to like go through and transition between a lower tone to a higher tone all the way up. Mm. So this one, a lot of people were at the back. You need to call them, yeah. let them know we're about yeah. to do. You have to do that thing for 10, 15, 20 minutes. Before you get them to the gather action. around, talk to them. What do you want to, who do you want to see? Before you get there, you don't, you don't arrive at this <laughs> in like, uh, let's say 15 minutes. Unless the crowd is already there and they're already dead, you can get them in five minutes. So it was difficult. Was it difficult? Um... I wouldn't say it was difficult. I, I like the challenge. Mm. I like the challenge of different crowd and different locations. And then you have to now think on your feet mm. and see what can I do to get these people hyped. So it was challenging, but it wasn't difficult. It was challenging, but it wasn't difficult. You mentioned that as a hype man or MC, your best friend is the DJ. Do you have a favorite DJ you'd definitely love to always be on stage with? Oh, I don't have... A favorite DJ. Mm -hmm. I have favorite DJs. Let us know. Um, I have a lot. I have a lot of DJs. Um, I can start from DJ Mike Smith, who mm. um, I'm it's officially on, on the show. DJ Varoski, um, DJ Loft, uh, AD DJ, DJ Milzy. Mm. You, you want me to go on? The Max <laughs> DJ, uh -huh. DJ Pizarro, yeah, F the all DJ, the DJs in Ghana. Uh, DJ Sleek. <laughs> DJ Kess. Mm. Uh, I love Kess. You like, see, Miss Austin. Oh, yes. I, I love, love the Austin. female DJ. I love, I love the female I DJ. Love There's a lot of them. There's a lot but of them. But is it also advisable to have, like, your personal DJ just so that you know that, oh, you're in sync with this person. He knows your style. When you're going out, you just go with him. Is it easier that way? Or is it a, a bit of work if it's, it's that way? It's easier, mm -hmm. but it's not challenging. Okay. That, it's not challenging. Ah, it's, right. it's, it gets boring. Right. It's just boring because then that's that's all you're doing. Mm -hmm. Um, I have this other DJ I didn't mention. Uh, DJ, I mentioned DJ Sleek, mm -hmm. DJ Wallpaper. Now the thing is, Sleek Wallpaper 
and a couple of the DJs I mentioned, you meet them occasionally, right? And then when you are playing, whenever a DJ is good, it doesn't matter where they're coming from. It can be DJ faculty, it can be whoever <clears throat> that you're not very familiar with. When a DJ is good and you come into contact with them, the same way they are looking at you like, oh, that's a good MC. So the same way you also recognize when you're working with a good DJ. Mm, mm. And the synergy will always work mm. for you just because everybody is working at that level. But when you're too familiar, there's something that's too familiar, yeah, then it gets familiar. boring. Mm. It gets boring because I know what you're going to say. I know where your next song, to the point where then I don't even have to try. To me, to the crowd, it's not boring, but to but me, to, for, to us, because we've done it over and over and over again. So you have to like find ways to spice it up. Mm. If not, you'll be stuck in a loop. Mm. Yeah. This career, I mean, Hype Man, Shook, MC, together, it seems like a new thing in Ghana. I want mm. to know from you, I mean, who was your motivation getting into it? Who did you look up to? Who was your role model in this area? I mean, I, would, I wouldn't say it's a new thing. I think it's something that people have ignored for a long time. We're now putting the spotlight yeah, on. Yeah, now we're, we're, we're now, people are now admitting that it's there. Or maybe yeah. now you guys are getting money from it. The money, they never they reach. But... <laughs> <laughs> hey, you people. <laughs> no, but, but it's better. Mm -hmm. The truth is, it's better. Um, uh, obviously, we've been talking about him the whole time. Eddie Blay, oh, um, okay. Bola Ray. Um, funny enough, DKB. DKB, even before I knew him as a comedian, mm. was an MC on campus. And that was around the, the time that I got I, like, the be biggest mm -hmm. interest in, in, in this. Uh, they are the people that I saw and felt like, I want to do this and I can do this. Right? Um, I just feel like people are very quick to dismiss anything that comes from the entertainment space. Mm -hmm. Artists have gone through that, DJs have gone through that. And it's time that they're now the turn of hype men and MCs. Where now we are also doing respect the hype man, respect the MC, and all of that. Me, I don't, I don't feel, I don't feel like it writes on that. It writes on what people think about what you do. I think when you do it right and you're professional about it, people tend to respect you. Mm. So uh, people in my space, from DJs to MCs and hype men, people address you how you address. Of course. So your outlook, how do you work? Um, you're asking off air about you know drinking and smoking mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Whatever you want to do is up to you. But the fact that you're in an entertainment space doesn't mean that you make that the mantra of what you do to a point where you know that the, the environment you're in is not very, you know, supportive of certain behavior. You need to understand that show business is you putting yourself out there. People's perception of you matters. So put yourself out there the right way, in the best way possible, and get the respect and still do your job. But you have a ritual before you go on set. A ritual? Oh, um, before you go on the stage. Um, do you smoke? Do you drink? Do you no. take energy drink? No. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually... I'm a, I, I'm, I've, <laughs> <laughs> so let me tell you this. I've been on stage, I've, I've been on stage for hours mm -hmm. and just remembered while I was on stage that I hadn't eaten a number of times. I can't count the number of times that has happened to me. My, I'm that type of person that finds it difficult to eat mm -hmm. in public. Like, mm -hmm. if it's a restaurant, it's different. But like, at an event, whilst things are happening, then I can't. So sometimes when you're offered food in such, certain places, I can't. When I'm going to an event and I'm really excited about it, I can't eat. Mm. So all I want is water. Right. I want to be hydrated. So it can be soda, it can be whatever, but I want to be hydrated. That's the worst thing. You don't want to be dehydrated. So water is your ritual? Yeah. Go I just go. need water or a drink. It doesn't have to be alcoholic. That very energetic. Because I've yeah. seen you on stage a couple of times. Yeah. Very, very energetic. Sweating once once everywhere. we are there. <laughs> yeah. And you need a lot of face towels. <laughs> <laughs> you need a lot of face towels. Right. Yes, that one is necessary. Okay, so when you were talking before this came in, you mentioned that... Uh, you know, how you carry yourself, so to speak, the branding. Does yeah. the branding come along with money? Does it come with money? Is this job lucrative? And I'm not talking about being a radio presenter. I'm right. talking about being an MC stroke hype man together. So the hype man bit. I, I think in, in just like in everything, when, when you start, people don't see your value mm. and that they, they are more reluctant to pay you what you feel you deserve. But the more you work on your brand, you get to a point mm. where it becomes easier. People already respect what you do and they are willing to pay what you, you, you desire to get in there. So I'd say on a, 
on a general basis, um, it's okay. I wouldn't say it's the, it's the best job if you're trying to be very affluent, if you're trying to be rich or something. That's, that's probably not. Mm. May I compare it to having a nine-to-five? Okay. That's been my approach from day one because you go to school and everybody expects you to get a job, go to job nine-to-five. How much would I make at the end of the month, nine-to-five? If I'm making more than that, I'm okay. Mm. That's, 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 that was then, though. I'm not, I don't mean right now. Mm. But that's, that was my... In the beginning. In the beginning. That was, that was my mentality going through because I don't have to work for 22 days or maybe 30 days in mm. a month. But if I can make more than somebody that works in that sense, then that's, make, not that's okay. bad. Yeah, that's not bad. But then when you are, when you are creating your rep, when you are getting into mm. that, you need to up it because there's a lot that comes with, into it. I can't wear the same outfit. This is literally the second time I'm wearing this outfit. Because the first time I, I wore it was on a show. Mm. And after that, maybe I can wear it three, four times. Know, and that's I, it. I know exactly what you're talking about. So there's about. a lot of effort. You have to buy a lot. of, And people don't value it. Exactly. That's the painful aspect. Because you're on the stage longer than anybody else. Mm. You use more energy than anybody else. At the end of the day, they want to pay you the least. Advocacy, advocacy. <laughs> but do you work uh, hand in hand or close to any artist as in hype for them? Do you hype for any artist? Officially, no. I have, I have artists that I'm friends with. No, we're cool. If they're on stage and they need help, sure. But um, I don't, don't, I don't have, have... Do you intend to do that? If, 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 if it works out, I don't, I don't want to force it. Do you have so. any artists in mind you think you'd want to hype for them? I'm trying to put me in this oh, corner. No, you I want, mean, you want me to mention this if name? You, if, you, <laughs> if you ask me, I can tell you. Then tell me. <laughs> tell me. <laughs> tell I, me. I want to be a hype woman for Buju. Buju, Buju. Bantu. Yes. Wait, Buju Bantu? Yes. Not, not Benson, Nigeria. No. Oh, Buju Bantu, Jamaica. <laughs> yes. Eesh, Irie. But there's that. I can't. You can't. It go on. <laughs> No, but, but there are a lot of artists that um, I respect. Mm. There are artists that I've actually watched and sort of uh, picked inspiration from mm. on stage. Because, like I said, Hype Man is a performance act. Mm. You're you almost like an, uh, like, a, uh, like an artist. So from Sarkodie, Sarkodie is somebody I've watched mm. movement-wise. Um, let me go a little crazy and say Kanye West and Drake. Mm. Ah, yeah, I love that. Um, let me say someone like E.L. E.L. Mm. is somebody I've watched from a distance. His movement on stage. I love L. One of the first people that I studied on stage was Adam. Mm. Yeah. If, if you go back to watch, I don't know about now, but if you go back to watch back then when I was in school, um, let's say that was like some five years ago, the way he used to perform on stage, his old songs, them hammer tunes, the hip-hop mm -hmm. tunes, the movement on stage, is just amazing. So it's like people like that, Maybe a manifest. I don't know. You'd go well with a manifest. Or a kiddie or something. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I wouldn't mind. We'll wait to see. But, I mean, I have, like, two questions before we go. Okay. Our time is up. Okay. If you were not in Ghana, mm. and you'd have to recommend a hype man for our event, mm. who would that be? Or who mm. would they be? If I wasn't in Ghana. If you were in Ghana, you're out of town. I'm out you of town. You cannot do it. Of course, a job came to you, mm. but you're not around. Right. And you have to recommend somebody. There's nobody. There's nobody? There's nobody. So, so, so I'm sorry. I'm, be uh, just dry like yeah, my, apolo my apologies <laughs> to you looking for a hype man and the hype man is not in town. But you have to wait and move your date to, an event, hey! to a date when I'm in Ghana. <laughs> Are you for real? <laughs> it means a lot. I mean, I've seen a couple of hype men. Yeah. I don't know whether they're good per your standards. Oh, oh no, they're, but good. they're, they're good. I mean, there are other hype men that are good. But just that... You wouldn't recommend anybody. Oh, I would. Mm. I would. But then you see, if I'm not in Ghana and you're asking me, then obviously I'm the one you want. Absolutely. So I'm not in town. Wait, make her come. Do you have any <laughs> favorite hype men in Ghana? Favorite? Mm. Yeah, I have one. Who? Kojo Manoa. You are just full of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's called Big Energy. Okay. Knowing who you are and accepting that, yeah, you are that guy. Mm. Know it's, who it's, you are and it's not arrogance, like, it's confidence. It's confidence. Okay, today we're supposed to bring a DJ, but because of David, we are mourning. We can't come and hype up ourselves here. So next week, we'll definitely bring your hype man and a DJ as well. We may just bring him.
maybe another time with the hype man just to make some noise for us so make sure you you know watch out for that we'll play you music any music so you give me small hype small oh. <laughs> small so i'm your audience so if my dj is ready please take us away and thank you for watching manor do you have any final words before we go Oh, uh, two things. Mm. I have a song with Kelvin Boy and Neptunes. It's called Waiting. I'm a piano song. The video is out. It's been out for a couple of months. Go okay. check it out. I also started my YouTube show. It's called A Mad Culture. Go hey. check it out. Tune into YFM 1079, Monday to Friday, 2 to 7 p.m. Watch it. I remember the name is K O J O M A N U E L. Kojo Manuel. Kojo Manuel. Are you mad? I'm <laughs> 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 not. So he said two things, but he ended up saying four or five. Yeah. Okay. Yes. okay. Oh, I'm supposed to do the hype yeah, so, I'm not doing anything. Oh, so...